Porsche is no stranger to motorsport, holding the record for the most manufacturer Le Mans wins, dominating sports car racing in multiple eras, and even running their own one-make series, it's safe to say the brand likes to race. Lesser known, however, is the company's flirtation with Rally. Lesser known still is that one of Porsche's most iconic cars was built to dominate Rally's most competitive class. This is the story of the Porsche 959. Introduced in 1982, the FIA Group B GT car regulations gave rise to some of the fastest and most outrageous racing machines ever made. While cars built to meet the requirements of this new class could theoretically race in many FIA-sanctioned events, the focus was very much on Rally, for which Group B was now the top class. Porsche knew Group B class rallying represented an opportunity for the mark to stretch its legs in a new arena, and so in 1981, the decision was made to start work on a car specifically designed to compete in the new category. Porsche's new managing director, Peter Schultz, was keen to begin development of a new 911. Helmut Bott, Porsche's chief engineer, convinced Schultz that building a Group B car would serve as an excellent way of developing and testing new technologies for the next generation of performance road cars. Schultz was more than happy to give the green light, and just like that, development was underway on Project Group B. Bott believed Group B was the right arena because he felt that all-wheel drive was a natural progression for the company's high-performance road cars. And what better way to stress test such a system than by racing on dirt and snow? With a motorsport focus, it was decided that this new car would need to be more than just a 911 with four driven wheels. It would need to be a total reimagining of the Porsche formula. Well, almost. The engine would stay at the back of the car. This was supposed to serve as a testbed for future 911s after all, but beyond that, not much would stay the same. The engine in question was a 2.8 litre twin turbocharged flat 6, largely based around the unit used in the 956 and the 962 Group C machines, and capable of producing 444 horsepower and 500 newton meters of torque. The body would be all new, made of aluminium and Kevlar composite. Nomex, a similar Kevlar-based material, was used for the floor of the car, a departure from the steel floors that were the base for most Porsche cars. Now, Group B was a homologated class, meaning that a minimum number of road-legal cars must be built to satisfy the regulations before a vehicle is allowed to compete. Development of the 959 was slower than expected, so in order to speed up the process, a small number of 911 Carreras were retrofitted with the in-development all-wheel drive system from the 959 with a view to racing them in the Paris-Dakar Rally. The Porsche 953, as it was known internally, would compete in 1984 and proved that Porsche was really onto something with the 959, winning the Paris-Dakar rally and instilling confidence in the team at Porsche that the 959 and its new PSK all-wheel drive system would have a strong chance in Group B. Porsche's PSK system was special because it allowed as much as 80% of the engine's power to be directed to the rear wheels, with the power balance able to be adjusted depending on grip levels and surface conditions to maintain grip at all times. If you're enjoying the video so far, tap the like button. It makes a big difference. Thank you. 1985 would see the debut of the Porsche 959, with the road car being revealed at the Frankfurt Motor Show as a planned 1986 model year car, only two years later than planned. They proposed two trim levels, Comfort and Sport. The Comfort cars fitted with creature comforts you would expect from a flagship Porsche, such as completely useless rear seats, as well as innovative height-adjustable air suspension, while the Sport variant was a much more track-focused, speed-oriented car, doing away with the rear seats entirely and replacing the air suspension with firm coilovers instead. 1985 also saw the 953 Paris-Dakar cars replaced by the 959s, though they still used the 953 engines in 1985. Unfortunately, they weren't as successful the second time around, as all three cars entered suffered mechanical failures and were unable to finish. Production delays meant that the road cars weren't ready for 1986, pushing back customer deliveries as well as their planned entrance into Group B Rally yet another year. The cars were ready enough, however, to compete in the Paris-Dakar Rally again in near final form. 
and managed to claim an exceptionally impressive 1st, 2nd and 6th place, beating the mighty Mitsubishi Pajero and reaffirming that the 959 was a serious off-road machine. The same year, Porsche unveiled their track-focused variant of the 959, named the 961. They took it to Le Mans, where it managed to win in its class and claim 7th overall. Sadly though, 1986 would see the end of Group B Rally after a number of deadly accidents forced the discipline's governing body, FISA, to axe the class. Porsche had spent so long developing the perfect Group B car that by the time they had finished, there was no longer a Group B to compete in. The following year, 1987, 959s began shipping to customers, and Porsche weren't done racing just yet. They took the 961 back to Le Mans, hoping to secure yet another class win. However, while running in 11th place, the driver perfectly executed a money shift, changing from 6th to 2nd, sending the car into the barriers. To add salt to the wound, members of the Porsche garage reported seeing flames coming from the car on their monitors. The driver was told to get out. The car suffered extensive damage thanks to the fire, but was later repaired and is on display in the Porsche Museum. While the 959 may have been built to dominate rally, the road car is more than special enough in its own right. The original specification of the car was capable of achieving 197 miles per hour, making it the fastest road legal production car in the world at the time. The later 959S variant, with larger turbos and around 60 more horsepower, was able to go even faster, hitting 211 miles per hour during a test in 1988. A total of 292 road cars were built, almost all of them being sold at a significant loss to Porsche. Despite the financial loss, however, the 959 proved pivotal not just for Porsche, but for the future of all performance cars, serving as an inspiration for a generation of supercars to come, and even serving as the starting point for Nissan's development of the R32 Skyline GTR, which you can learn all about here. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.